Hello everybody, this is Oliver from NEO and today we are going to deep dive into three different organic stem teas from Japan. We're gonna deep dive into so-called kukicha. For this I have brought three different types. One is from the farmer Mr. Watanabe which is in the deep south on the island of Yakushima. Then a second one is also from the south from the city or around the city of Kagoshima from Mr. Sakamoto. So, uh, Kukicha uh, Gyokuro and we're gonna go to the more to the north where we are going to be in the region of Shizuoka the village of Isagawa there we have Mr. Osada who is actually producing his Kukicha in this region and what I want to find out a little bit is what actually are the taste differences of these three different stem teas and what are the nuances between them coming from the region being from the same cultivar so the same green tea type or plant type 80% or 75 to 80% in Japan is made out of Yabukita so it's quite a common cultivar quite widespread but it's only preparation and also uh, the soil and also the region which influences the tea and that's what I want to find out today. For them, uh, for you who don't know too much about stem teas, so what is actually a stem tea? In the early days in Japan what happened is when the farmers they produced the high or the green tea for uh, the aristocratic class or even for the emperor they always had to take off the stems or the stem tea. Um, from the normal leaves so it was often a residue of the tea production they started to drink them by themselves but now in the recent time more and more people started to uh, enjoy kukicha also due to the fact that on the one hand kukicha is an alkalizing tea uh, so there's much less acidity and also it is a tea which is in amount of caffeine much lower than a normal sencha. For example, normal sencha is like a normal Arabica coffee. So we talk about 70 to 80 milligrams of caffeine. Meanwhile, kukicha can as far uh, can go down as far as 20 to 25 milligrams per cup. So this is actually um, the reason. Also, I often drink myself. Uh, kukicha in the evening it's a very nice evening tea also it is a little bit more savory it's a little bit more strong and a little bit more dry sometimes in taste so after I've eaten and drank the whole day my palate is not that fine anymore as in the morning so then when you have a little bit of a stronger a little bit of tea with a little bit more of character and a little bit of a straight to taste the kukicha is a very good solution but now let's go into these three different teas. Uh, so on um, this side here, so on my right side, we have the kukicha from the farmer Osada. In the middle, we have the kukicha of Mr. Sakamoto. And uh, the far out on the other side, we have the kukicha of Mr. Watanabe from Yakushima. As you already can see or what when we look at the visual aspects of these teas um, we already see that um, the kukicha from uh, Mr. Osada and the kukicha of uh, Mr. Watanabe they are a little bit closer to each other coming from the fact that both of them are shaded around the same time so Mr. Watanabe we talk about seven days um, from uh, Mr. Osada we talk about five days meanwhile and this is pretty impressive when you look at the leaves of uh, Mr. Sakamoto's stem tea there we can really see that he, coming from a Gyokuro this tea has much darker leaves but it has also this finer a little bit chopped up leaves um, as we know from uh, the kukichas so his tea is even a little bit or seems a little bit more dusty than the other ones but they're all of them in terms of mix between leaves and stems, they're quite similar. The Osada tea seems to have a little bit more of uh, stems if we compare it to the Kukicha and uh, the Kukicha and uh, the Mr. Uh, Sakamoto tea so from coming from the Gyokuro, 
there we absolutely see a very similar proportion of stems and leaves so out just of the visual aspect when you look into the visual aspect of a tea i would suggest or i would think that the mr sada tea is a little bit the kind of the most strong in a little bit this hay flavor a little bit a little bit more of a, um, of, a uh, of a kind of a minerally flavor a little bit more drier it can also be um, here i'm expecting the most of um, in terms of umami so a little bit of a savory a little bit more of a fruity note due to the fact that the, the tea leaves are really dark and if we go to the tea of uh, mr uh, watanabe from yakushima so i also expect a little bit of a dry maybe a little bit more of a grassier note and and a little bit more of a leafy or more vegetal note than the one from Musada, due to the fact that you have just a higher concentration or higher part of tea leaves versus stems uh, between or in the comparison of these two teas. But let's go right into it and have a look how the tea taste of these three different teas like. So for this I have brought my black Tokoname Kyusu. Good, so we have five grams of each tea, which we just put into the kyusu. we're gonna leave it there for one minute good so now we're gonna pour the different tea So now we have these three different teas brewed and already in the visual aspect if you just uh, go from uh, Mr. Sada tea and then over to Mr. Sakamoto's tea and then to Mr. Watanabe tea so Shizuoka, Kagoshima and then Yakushima we can see that the uh, Sada tea is quite a clean tea um, it's in a kind of a darker yellowish golden color so much more of this a little bit hay flavor or hay color which darkens the tea a little bit in this golden uh, color is quite present with the Osada tea if we compare it to the one from Mr. Watanabe what I uh, what is the other kukicha which is uh, in terms of leaf color quite similar we see that the more the higher concentration of the leaves pushes the tea slightly more into kind of a of a of a greener but also slightly milky um texture or seems kind of a little bit more of a dusty liquid so when we just have a look at these two you can see mr watanabe uh, tea is slightly greener slightly a little bit more milky this one is a little bit cleaner and a little bit darker in this yellow golden color and very very different is when we just compare the Mr. Osada tea and the Mr. Sakamoto tea so we can see that the dark leaf color definitely brings much more green much more green intensity into the tea water and here um, uh, we have also a slight milkiness with the Mr. Sakamoto tea where it turns a little bit into a more of a, of a milky green uh, color meanwhile um, uh, the Yakushima has a little bit of a green and a slightly milky but strongly more in the golden color and then the Mr. Osada tea we have a really nice golden touch to the water um, as a difference in the visual aspect 
Now from the leaves, when we have just uh, smell at the leaves, so the Mr. Osada tea. Here I got a lot, a lot of, of, of a little bit roasty and also popcorny flavor. I got a slight savoriness uh, to it, but it's very strong in a little bit this hay, a little bit dried grass flavor, but I also get a little bit of nuttiness. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I get a little bit of pistache nut flavor, which is pretty amazing on the taste profile of this tea. Then we go to the Yakushima tea. So Mr. Watanabe. So it's much of a deeper, more intense flavor profile. Definitely much more grassiness. So I get a stronger grassy flavor. And a little bit of this light, slightly savory, slightly marine note to it but still very strong in the hay and grassy flavor this one here and let's go to Mr. Sakamoto mm, you got a lot of fruit a little bit of a flower mm. yeah definitely the sweetest tea of the three of them a little bit of a lighter grassiness so here i um with the mr watanabe tea i have a much more of a kind of a, of a stronger summer grassiness and here i have a kind of a slight fresh grass fresh cut grass flavor profile next next to this fruity and sweet profile which i have um from the Gyokuro Kokicha. So now let's put this down and go into the tasting. Let's start mid with the Mr. Uh, Osada. Then I'll take the Mr. Watanabe as these tea seem a little bit more close. So I can get the nuances out of these tea. And then as a final tea, I will take the one from Mr. Sakamoto. So as I expected, the Osada tea is a little bit, in terms of taste, it is a little bit stronger, also a little bit in this more um, more kind of a citrusy, slightly astringent note. So it's a little bit more of kind of a bitter and a dry flavor. It has a lot of the hay flavor. It is quite minerally, so also the minerals on the top, they're tingling quite quite strong on the top of my tongue. So it's it's quite a dry, quite a kind of hayish, and also more a little bit of this, um, of nearly a little bit of a wooden flavor you got with this tea. So. So you, I'm really, really strong. Yeah, I really got this kind of hay, wooden, a little bit dry, tingling flavor. A little bit of sweetness coming also with it. Uh, it comes from this light or the slight shading of this tea, which you have a little bit in this tea. So this is quite interesting on the terms of, of in this tea. If you like a little bit more the dry, more the wooden flavor, more a little bit the hay flavor in the stem tea, this is definitely a tea you might like. Um, now let's go over to Mr. Watanabe's tea to have a comparison. Mr. Watanabe is also a little bit on the drier side so you definitely have the presence of the stems. You definitely have kind of this flavor coming out from um, 
from kind of this good mix so the higher concentration of stems but um, as here the leaves are more present and there's a, there's a high amount of leaves in the tea you definitely also have a sweet note and a more grassy note and a little bit also a little bit more of a veggie and ve vegetal refreshing note on the tea while the osada stem tea stays a lot in this wooden uh, more dry hay flavor here you definitely have uh, coming through the leaves the sweetness of the leaves and a little bit more of a vegetal flavor and it's less dry it's definitely less dry than the than the tea of mr osada so you and here you got a little bit more so with the miso sada tea you have a little bit more of kind of a of a slight kind of a sweet corn flavor which is much less present in the kukich of yakushima but in the kukich of yakushima you have much more of this a little bit green uh maybe edamame um young spinachy flavor but very slight it's not too strong but it goes a little bit in the direction but both of the tea they have quite um uh, a kind of a refreshing a little bit of an astringent note which is not too strong but it is a uh, nicely kind of present as a refreshing aspect of both of the teas and now let's go into the last one so mr sakamoto's gyokuro kukicha Mm. So this is really different to the other twos. We still got a little bit of this um, of this acidity, a little bit of this minerally, this, this tingling on the top of the tongue, but it's less present and there's much more a sweetness to the tea. We have a savory um, taste profile, so it's coming the shading or the stronger or the darker leaves really show themselves in this tea with a little bit of more of a of kind of a, of a fruitiness but there's also a savory part to it and it seems to linger much more in the in my palate it seems to be more present like more full-bodied so this tea definitely has kind of a of a flavor profile where you're more around the sweet note of maybe a little bit of a banana note as well Yeah, I got a lot of banana, a little bit of pear note, but still you have this hay flavor and a little bit the mineraly side of the kukicha. So typically for the kukicha coming in. So here definitely if you're looking for much more sweetness and you want to uh, have the little bit this savory aspect of a shaded Japanese green tea. There you definitely with the kukicha, this can be absolutely your type of tea but it still has this nice presence of the hay flavor a little bit of this tingling aspect a little bit of this refreshing citrusy note which the, both the other teas have a little bit more present but here definitely it is also present mr osada definitely the driest but also going much more in this a uh, little bit sweet corn flavor this is the nice uh, aspect also in terms of sweetness it shows a little bit more of this sweet corn flavor and then the mr watanabe tea we have much more going into this grass in here the freshness I would say in terms of freshness, the Mr. Watanabe tea is definitely the strongest. So you have a little bit these grassy tones, which then seem to boost a little bit the freshness of this tea. So when we have just a last kind of resume of this tea, I would say um, with, uh, with Mr. Osada, you have a nice dry flavor. You stay along in the sweet, in the wooden and a little bit the hay flavor. It's the most tingling on the top of the tongue. And then you have a kind of a sweet corn flavor coming in. Then we go to the Mr. Watanabe from Yakushima. Um, here, the most dominant is a little bit this grassy flavor, good mix with also the hay flavor. It definitely has a strong refreshing aspect to it. 
um, driven a little bit or seems to be driven like the, by the grassiness of the tea and as a last tea Mrs. Sakamoto's Gyokuro Kokicha definitely most on the sweet note it has a little bit of a banana pear note and then going in into a little bit of a of a of a slight hay flavor a minerally flavor but still staying very very strong on the sweet tones so this was this comparison three different stem teas i hope you like this one and uh, if you ever have a question never hesitate to ask it and um, i'll be happy to answer your question and this was the video of today i guess i see you tomorrow bye